Hi, it's Cheryl with from Caribou Country Lifestyle. I'm out in my new in-ground garden bed that we have put in here. We have two in-ground garden beds. They're about 30 feet long and three feet wide. In this other garden bed, I have already planted all my brassicas. So I have cabbage, cauliflower, two kinds of cauliflower actually. I have a cheddar cauliflower, an early white snowball cauliflower, and then I have my Brussels sprouts, or no, I didn't get Brussels sprouts. I have my broccoli. So I have all of this planted over in this other bed. In this bed here, I'm going to be planting sweet potatoes. Now the sweet potatoes that I have, I did order some sweet potato slips, but I also started my own sweet potato slips and I just wanna show you what I have done when I started my own. I'm gonna get a little closer. I'm just gonna kneel down here. So I have in this jar, I have the, some sweet potato slips and these are the ones that I got, that I ordered. And when I received them, I stuck them in this jar of water so that I could get them to sprout their roots. Now that I have the roots sprouted on these ones that I ordered, I can plant them. I'm just gonna put it back in here. I also added some of my own sprouts to it as well, but I'm gonna show you those in this jar. So in this jar, I have all my own sprouts that I started. I bought two sweet potatoes from uh, TNT Market. It's an Asian uh, grocery store market in Vancouver. And I picked these up. And what I did was I submerged the half of the sweet potato in water. And it, in the book that I was following, it says it takes a couple of months. This actually took three months before I got any sprouts. And once I, uh, once the sprouts were about four inches, three to four inches tall, then I took them out. I'm just gonna grab all of these out of the jar because I'm having a hard time just grabbing one. And I just wanna show you, look at the roots on that. So these are ready to be planted. And now I'm going to plant these sweet potato slips and I'm going to plant them a foot apart. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on each side of the bed in this three foot wide bed and then I'm going to come down a foot and do two more a foot apart. Basically side by side but a foot apart in distance. So let's get started. I'm going to put these back in the jar and I'll just pull them out as I need them. I've got a little shovel here too. And I hear thunder. So this might be a short video. Okay, I'm gonna grab my shovel. You hear that thunder? Okay, this dirt that we have put in this is a mix of garden soil and compost. And my husband and my son, Austin, were the ones that in, put in all this dirt for me. So thank you to them. I'm just picking out a couple of weeds that have showed up to the party. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at this end and I'm just going to dig a hole. And this is at least a foot. I'm also gonna throw this rock out of here over my fence. So we've got our fence installed. We put a six foot fence around this whole area so that the deer will, won't will be able to get in here and disrupt what I have going on. So now I'm going to measure from this hole, I'm going to measure one length and that's about a foot. So I'm going to measure a foot and I'm going to dig another hole. I should have counted my uh, sweet potato slips and I'm just going to go down and measure another shovel length
and I'm going to grab some of these slips out. So I'm just going to grab all of these. And I'm going to plant these slips up right up to the first set of leaves so that that root system is going to be in the dirt. So I'll come back here. I'm going to put this one in there on this side. And I'll grab another one. I'll bury that one down a little deeper. Bury it right up. I was going to do this the other day, but <laughs> The rain has been good because it's watering everything as I'm planting it, but I couldn't get in here because it was raining and I couldn't plant anything. So it's helpful and then it also hinders me to be able to do what I, other planting that I need to have done. Once I get these sweet potatoes planted in here, then I just have a couple of other things that I want, depending on how many sweet potatoes I have. That will be the deciding factor. So we'll come down another foot. And a foot here. Put this one in. And when I'm finished planting them all, then I will uh, let you know how many I ended up with. Okay, I'm just going to show you what I've done quickly because the thunder is getting more so. So here are, I have six cabbage plants at this end. I didn't have enough covers to put over top. I have some plastic clutches at that end and then I just use some milk cartons for at this end. So I have my cabbage over here and then this little pink tag here. This is still my Scorpio cabbage. And then this one is my cheddar cauliflower under these. Here is my Chinese cabbage, the Asian cabbage that I've planted. And then this is my early snowball cauliflower under these caps. Then I have the broccoli next. And then at the other end here is the more of the Scorpio cabbage. So in my row that I have planted my sweet potatoes in, I have 19 sweet potato slips. And I got them all planted and it took up about half of the bed. And then I planted, I had a couple of watermelon sprouts that I had started inside so I put those right there and then down from that these are my spaghetti squash plants I plunk those in here and then at the end this is my butternut squash plants and even if they spread there's still I'm just gonna back up here this space over here with the black plastic that if it spreads, I can tr sprawl it out and train it to go in a different direction instead of coming over here where I have my cabbage and my cauliflower. Now, with uh, starting these sweet potato sprouts, the ones that I bought, I actually purchased five sweet potato slips. And that costed me $22 ordering them online through one of my seed catalogs. The two potatoes that I bought and sprouted my own sprouts I got 12 sprouts from those and those two potatoes costed me like a couple of dollars maybe three dollars for those two potatoes so it yes it does take three months to be able to get those sprouts I feel the rain now but in the end it's way cheaper 
to do it that way. So, I mean, if you're interested in doing something like that, look into that. I bought two potatoes. When you take the potatoes, I'm just going to grab my jar. If it's a long sweet potato, I just filled the jar up about half to two thirds full. And then I stuck the potato into the water and I'm continuously, you know, checking it and changing it or adding more water to it. And it sat for a good two and a half months before I actually started seeing anything starting with it. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I actually was gonna give up on it. But then I'm like, oh, I'll just wait a little bit longer. Oh, I'll just wait a little bit longer. It's actually raining now. I'm going to move to where there is some cover. I've got at least my cameras in the cover. And uh, I just, that's what's important is having my camera under the cover. So what I did was I just picked, got two potatoes, sweet potatoes, and one of them was slender enough and long enough that I could just sit it right into the jar of water and that's all I did. I put it on my windowsill and left it for like two and a half months. Then the other one was a little, not quite as long. So what you do is you'll put toothpicks. I put three toothpicks in around the potato and then it sat on top but the potato was inside the jar in the water and that just sat and soaked as well. So you'll notice first, and you wanna have it so that the pointy end is going down in the water as well. Just make sure you do that. What you'll notice first is little sprouts coming from the bottom of the potato at first. And then it starts in the with the through the eyes of the potato it actually you'll that's when you'll notice the slips growing once they get four inches long the slips growing from the potato you just snap those off and then you fill up another jar with water and put the slips in the water and let them sprout once they have their sprouts on them then you can plant them in the garden it was quite simple. Okay, so I found the potato. I actually dug it out of my compost bin. So this is the potato and I had it sitting in the jar. So this was the long slender one and I just had it sitting in the jar up and down and then see how I have this sprout coming out from the side. The roots are all down here. I, I got as much as I needed out of this potato. I had got quite a few sprouts from it and so I threw the rest of it in my compost but I have 19 slips and I last year I only had five slips because those were the ones that I ordered so um, yeah it worked out really well and I just bought two p sweet potatoes and I ended up getting 12 slips from the sweet 12 from the two sweet potatoes so I thought it was a pretty good pretty good deal doing it that way I say I almost gave up I was gonna just thought it wasn't working and I left it and it ended up working so it worked out really well next year I'm not even gonna bother ordering sweet potatoes I'll just do this well we'll see how these sweet potatoes work out that I've planted in the garden so I just wanted to take you along to show you what I've done I hope you like this video if you did like the video throw in a like and if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button Thanks for joining me and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.